It's Monday, June the 8th, 2020, and Henry and I are here with another book. Um, you may or may not have noticed that I have some planets revolving around me this morning. <laughs> there are so many of them. Like any bright light, I am the sun, and here I have some planets. And the reason that I've got them is that we are going to read a book today that has to do with the sun and that has to do with seasons, and it's called Sunshine Makes the Seasons. This book was written by a guy named Franklin M. Branley. Here's a little bit about him. Henry, I'm going to move your milk so you don't knock it over, okay? He was born in 1915 in New York State, and he died in 2002 of natural causes at 87. He has written more than 150 uh, children's books on science, and even though they're deceptively simple, um, they have a lot of really, really good information in them. Henry is very excited because he just got a box of musical instruments. <coughs> I put them away, and then I bring them out every so often, so he gets very excited. Are you so happy to have that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you going to help me read this book? After we read Sunshine Makes the Seasons, um, I want to show you something that was produced by the CBC, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, and uh, it's stunning. So, Sunshine Makes the Seasons by Franklin M. Branley, illustrated by Michael Rex. This is meant for <laughs> children to read when they're just, just learning to read. So the sentences and the information in here is a little bit simple, but it's really super useful to the people who are reading it. There we go. Sunshine makes the season. Sunshine. Sunshine warms the earth. If the sun stopped shining, the earth would get colder and colder. We would freeze. The whole world would freeze. <coughs> the sun shines all through the year, but we are warmer in summer than in winter. The amount of sunshine makes the difference. The earth spins around, or it rotates, once in 24 hours. That's why we have day and night. When we are on the sun side of the earth, that is daylight, as the earth rotates, we turn away from the sun. There is sunset and then night. At the same time that the earth spins, it goes around the sun. This takes a year to make up one trip around the sun. Uh, Mercury, on the other hand, goes around the sun in 88 days. So its year is much, much faster than earth's which takes 365. During a year, the length of the days changes. In winter, the days are short. It may be dark by the time you get home from school. It is cold because we don't get many hours of sunshine. This book was written for people in either the Northern Hemisphere or the Southern Hemisphere, but not near the equator because if the Earth is going like this, it's kind of wobbling, like that um, to make the seasons. The but, middle of the planet, the, the equator. Pardon? Yeah, yeah it is. Um, if you're living near the equator, you don't get moved very far away from the sun, so their day nights are like the exact same every single day of the year. So if you lived in Ecuador, for example, the sun rises at 6 in the morning and sets at 6 in the evening every single day of the year. It doesn't get shorter or longer. As we move into spring, days become a bit longer. By summer, they are even longer. The days may be so long that it's still light out when you go to bed. It's warm because we get many hours of sunshine. After the long days of summer, the days begin to get shorter and cooler. It is fall and time to go back to school. 
all through the year, the Earth has been rotating once in 24 hours, giving us day and night. Do you have a train whistle? Are you going to sing the Good Morning Train song? Yeah. <laughs> Are you going to go get some more instruments? Yeah. We can't wait, right? All through the year, the lengths of darkness and daylight have been changing. The seasons have been changing, too. So here is the Empire State Building in New York, the Sydney Opera House in Australia. You can see the reason. You've got some, well, they're spheres, not circles. If they were flat, they'd be circles. This is a circle. Oh, please don't juggle those. There's a wood floor underneath you, right? If you drop them, they'll make quite a loud noise. If you want to juggle them, perhaps go where there's carpet. The downstairs neighbors are so kind. They don't ever talk about how loud we are up here, dropping plastic balls on the floor. Oh, gosh. You can see the reason for the changes by using an orange for the earth, a pencil, and a flashlight. Push a pencil through an orange from top to bottom. If you're going to try this, make sure you ask your family first. Um, I would have no problem because I, I, I would probably eat this orange after sticking a pencil all the way through it. But don't do this to food unless you've made sure it's okay. The top, of, the top is the North Pole. You can mark it with an N. The bottom is the South Pole. Using a marking pen, draw a line around the orange halfway between the poles. That's the equator. Stick a pin in the orange about halfway between the equator and the North Pole. Imagine this is where you live. It's very clear that he lives in New York, isn't it? He's in the Northern Hemisphere. <coughs> Turn the pencil and the orange. The I, pencil... I've got that big instrument. What is that called? It's called... You know what it is called? What's it called? Cool. Can you shake it and let, let people guess what it might be? Do you know what it's called? What he's got? Mm -hmm. Okay, can we show the camera? Yeah. Can we show them? It's a tambourine. Henry has a tambourine. But it doesn't have a light switch. It doesn't have a light switch. No, you have a tambourine in the box that does have a light switch. Because in addition to being loud, it also lights up. The perfect toy for a child to shake. Well, I would like to read this book. And if you put it right there, it will be very hard for me to read it. You're impeding my reading there, boss. The earth also has an axis. There is nothing like a pencil through the earth. It, there is nothing like a pencil through the earth. But the earth spins as though there were something like a pencil running from pole to pole. Hold the axis of the orange straight up and down in a darkened room. Have someone shine a flashlight on the orange. The light is supposed to be the sun. The part of the orange toward the flashlight is in the daylight. The other half is in darkness. Daylight falls on the North Pole. It does have a light switch. You've brought your other tambourine? Well, I hope you're going to show us. He'll turn it on and then we'll get to see it. Uh, daylight falls on the North Pole and also the South Pole, even when you spin the orange. Can I show everybody? It's a Wiggles tambourine. It has a light switch. Loud and flashy at the same time. There you go. Walk all the way around the flashlight. Keep the light shining on the orange. That would be the same as the earth going all around the sun. It would be a year. Keep the axis straight up and down. So I've done this in my class with my students, except I haven't used an orange. I've just used another kid. So you've got the sun in the middle that's emitting light outward. Then you've got the orange going around the sun, but the orange, as it goes around the sun, is also spinning. Here I've got 
The only thing that's spherical on my desk that I've got is a robot that I borrowed from school to prepare for next year. So here's my planet and it's spinning. This is day and night, but then if it was going around the sun, let's say this flashing wiggles tambourine is the sun, so it's doing this. This is a year, but as it's doing this, it's also doing this. And as it's doing that, it's also doing this. The tilt, the axial tilt of the planet is what makes us have seasons. Here, sorry, I borrowed your tambourine. There you go. Whenever you, uh, whenever you are, oh my gosh, wherever you are as the circle, the flash, uh, as you circle the flashlight, holy smokes, Roxy, the orange is lighted from pole to pole. Although the year and all, or all through the year and all over the earth, Days and nights would be the same length. There would be no change in season. But we know that does not happen on Earth. The days get shorter and then longer as the Earth goes around the sun and winter changes for summer. It's because the axis of the Earth is not straight up and down. It's tilted. Let's experiment with the orange. This time, tilt the axis the way it is tilted in the picture. That's the way the Earth's axis is tilted. Hold the orange so the North Pole is tilted away from the flashlight. Turn the orange all the way around and you will see that the pin in the light, the pin's only in the light for a short time. The northern half of the year has short days and long nights. Sunshine does not fall on the North Pole. <coughs> The North Pole has its long winter night. It is winter and it is cold. During winter in the North, it doesn't have daylight at all, right? The sun goes down and then that's it. Um, if you were in the Southern Hemisphere, it would be light at the, at the South Pole 24 hours a day. Keep the axis of the orange tilted in the same direction and go part way around the flashlight. Now the light falls on both poles. It is springtime in the north. Days are getting longer. Without changing the tilt of the axis, move around until you are halfway around the flashlight from where you started. Soon the north pole will be tilted toward the light. It is summer. As you turn the orange, the pin is in the light longer than it is in the dark. The, the northern half of the earth has long days and short nights. The North Pole has its long summer days. What do you have now? Can I show them? Yeah. This is a lemon. This is a lemon shaker. It has little things inside of it. Makes a beautiful sound, doesn't it? Here you go. Mm -hmm. I want to open it. Well, if you opened it up, it wouldn't work. I mean, there's no way to open it up unless we used a big saw. But then it would be broken forever. You just want to see what's inside, huh? It would be nice if it were translucent or transparent instead of opaque, and then you could see the inside. Keep moving around the flashlight. Remember, always keep the orange tilted in the same direction. You'll see once again the light falls on both the North Pole and the South Pole of the orange. It is fall in the north. The days are getting shorter and cooler. Keep moving around until you come back to winter. They happen. Oh, I thought I skipped a page. They happen because sunshine makes the seasons and because the axis of the earth is tilted. The southern half of the earth has seasons too. They are the opposites of our seasons. When it is summer and we are going to the beach, people on the southern half of the earth have winter. They are skating and skiing. Well, I mean, depending on where you live, because in some places it doesn't get cold enough to do outdoor winter sports because it doesn't really snow. But I digress. Our summer is the southern half of the earth's winter and vice versa. Our winter is their summer. The North Pole and the South Pole also have seasons. Their winters are cold and dark. The sun does not rise every day. It is dark all winter long. During the summer at the poles, the sun does not set every day. 
For several weeks, there is no light. Seasons at the poles are opposite. When the North Pole has winter, the South Pole has summer. Six months later, when it is winter at the South Pole, it is summer at the North Pole. Along the equator, it is warm all of the time. The temperature stays about the same all through the year. You can see why if you experiment with the orange. Move the pin to the equator. Watch the pin to see what happens as you go through a year. You'll see that the day and night are just about the same length in summer and in winter, spring and fall. That's good if you like warm weather all the time, but it's also nice to see snow once in a while, to see the flowers and the birds of springtime, to go swimming in the summer, and to have pumpkins in the fall. Year after year, the days change, and so do the seasons. We have winter, spring, summer, and fall because the sun warms the earth and because the axis of the earth is tilted. And this thing, this giant block of text, says, find more out about the sun. Let's read that, but I'm going to change my camera. Hold on a second. There we go. The sun has been giving off light for the last 4.5 billion years. Light, traveling at 186,000 miles per second, takes about 8 minutes to travel from the sun to the earth. The sun's temperature is 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit at the surface and 27 million degrees Fahrenheit at the center. The average distance from the earth to the sun is 93 million miles. He says the average distance because our orbit around the sun isn't perfectly spherical, circular, rather, right? We go further and we go closer, but the average is 93 million miles. The sun spins around once every 27.4 days. The highest temperature ever recorded in the United States was 134 degrees Fahrenheit at Death Valley, California in July 1913. The hottest temperature ever recorded anywhere on the planet was 136 degrees uh, in Alizizia, Libya, in September 1922. The world's highest average temperature, 94 degrees Fahrenheit, occurs in Dakol, Ethiopia. The lowest temperature recorded on Earth was 128.6 degrees below zero Fahrenheit in Antarctica, July 21st, 1983. And then I'll read you this last little tiny bit about the author and illustrator. Franklin M. Branley was an astro was astronomer emeritus and chairman of the American Museum Hayden Planetarium. <clears throat> in 1960, he originated the Let's Read and Find Out Science series, of which this is, is a part, dedicated to explaining science to young children and encouraging them to explore their world. Dr. Branley was the author of over 150 science books for children. The illustrator, Michael Rex, has illustrated 23 books, 16 of which he has also written. Among them are popular Truck, Duck, My Fire Engine, and My Race Car. He lives in Woodlawn, New York, with his wife, Tessa McKinnerly. To find out more about his work, please visit michaelrex.com. What a good book. Now, I have something fascinating to show you before we go for another day. Let me flip it over. There we go. Thank you, Franklin. It was a very good book. So, there is a show that I recently found called The Wild Canadian Year. Uh, I have linked to this site below in the description. If you like nature documentaries, you are in for a real treat here. Uh, it is presented by David Suzuki. It's fascinating, and the camera work is spectacular. So. There's all sorts of beautiful wildlife shots and information about wildlife. But what I'd like to show you is something about how they did their opening sequence. Their opening sequence is a time lapse that shows the seasons during um, one full year in a forest. And let's go over to this other tab. I've also linked this in the description. And uh, it's only a minute and 10 seconds, but it shows how they made the time lapse. I really like using time lapses in my classroom because it takes things that take a long time and it speeds them up. So perhaps at some point today you can check one of the devices in your home and see if it time lapses 
Um, a lot of phones, a lot of tablets have the capability to time lapse. So the only problem is you have to be quite patient. So if I was going to set up a time lapse, I would take my phone, I would set it up, I would let it run without touching it, and then I would go back and check it later. So you have to be patient to not pick up the device and fiddle around with it. You have to just sort of let it sit. So here is the Wild Canadian Year making of forest time lapse. This was posted three years ago. It's a, a minute and 10 seconds long. One of the things we really wanted to show in, in, in the film is how, how weather and seasons affects life over time. And you can't see that just by looking at it. You actually have to speed it up. So we use time-lapse photography to manipulate time. One of the big sequences that we wanted to film through the series was the changes that happen in a forest over an entire year. We went to a maple forest in Quebec and set up a tracking camera that recorded a time-lapse as it moved through the forest. We started in the spring and then came back every month and did exactly the same shot so we could record how the forest changed. It took a year, but in the end, we were able to merge all these shots together to create our amazing title sequence. Right? Oh my gosh. Like, fabulous. Um, I, just, oh, I want to put my gift. You want to put that by that? Oh dear, we are having a Lego emergency. What should I take off? No, you need something. You need to put on. You need to put on this over there. Do you want me to attach them like this? Yeah. There. Got it. Do you want to get down off the chair and I can hand it to you? It's, it pulls apart. See? I could also put it on this side. Dip it like that. Okay, down you go. And now that I've shown you how to do it, you can do it yourself, okay? So tomorrow we're going to continue by doing another very simple book about the passage of time. Um, we've got one about seasons, we've got one about the months of the year, I think. Uh, they're very short, so maybe I'll show you a couple of them. Anyhow, from Henry and me and Henry's Lego and his flash and tambourines in our little apartment, be happy, be safe, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Goodbye. Say goodbye, Henry. Goodbye, Henry. <laughs> goodbye.